that's called the glory land. Welcome to Coffee and Connect with Larry and Gloria Lundstrom from Nashville, Tennessee. It's a windy day today. Oh my. My, oh my. I'm telling you what, I stepped out to go to the mailbox and it just about took me up the road. And you know, it takes a big wind to get me up the road. <laughs> Good morning, Marty. Good morning. I think you sent your wind from South Dakota to us. We are happy to share it with you. Oh, that's so <laughs> kind of you. Keep it to yourself, would you please? We, we have more than enough. So we, we are happy to share it with you. Oh, good. Well, it's a good day for a good cup of coffee, right? It I, just, is. I needed a couple extra this morning. And, well, mm -hmm. oh, you talk about a busy week that things have gone on. It's been unbelievable. The oh, news. my. The news, the news is running off the chart. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, what is it? Uh, Turkey is up around 50,000 deaths in Turkey so far. Unbelievable to think it of. Is. It's just, we can't even fathom. You see that news and you say, God be with these people and how they're fought, you know, uh, in the wars and you have the, the earthquake and these people, the little children, they don't know what's going on. We are spoiled here. We really yes. are. You know, we, had, uh, we have a nice homes, you know, we have food, yeah. we can get out. And it's just like, it's, it breaks my heart to see those little children that they don't know what's going on and what will their lives be? Yeah, it says in the last days, dangerous times will come. Very dangerous times. You can't be any more dangerous than nuclear war. No, that's a, that's rising, you know. With China and Russia mm -hmm. going together, if they would go together, that would be quite a, a terrifying thing. It would bring us into World War Three, right. Right? right? You know, nuclear war. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. You know, no. we. Uh, this generation, we have been so blessed. And then you have flooding and snow yeah. where they've not had snow in decades in California. That's right. And uh, here they were in the drought. They couldn't, they were so dry and now they have snow and the flooding. Well, and we saw, we saw a motorhome go over the edge. Oh my, on the national news. Yes, on the national news. And after living in a motorhome all those years, that was terrifying. Oh, that was terrifying. We were in a, what was it, Mississippi? And we were in that flash flood and that was bad enough. I remember looking out the back, out the side window and, the, and it was raining so heavy. And I looked way down, it was about distance of about, oh, block. And I could just see the creek that was running and it was getting higher and I could just look. And I mean, literally within about five minutes, it was halfway up to the coach and I thought, ah, oh, that can't be. And when they say a flash flood, they meant it because then <laughs> in another five minutes, it was up to the door of our coach. The pastor happened to have a friend nearby that had one of those great big semis with a long trailer on it that you could carry with back hole with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he pulled up and ran a cable out to us and pulled us out of there. Our, our whole electrical system was going to be on below water. And we were going to be electrocuted yeah. trying to go out there and wading through the water. I was not out there. Don't go. But, you know, men. Yeah, you know, this, I I was feeling it all right there. <laughs> I could see no. it. I'd be like, don't do it. You can't go there. <laughs> no. You remember that t-shirt they had out years and years ago called No Fear? And they were wearing it. I think your husband was wearing it. I think your son was For wearing it. For sure my son. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And Larry, it's just like, if it's if it can be done, even though it's dangerous, let's try it. But when I saw that motorhome go, yes. beautiful, big. And it went up and over the cliff. And I'm like, oh, I mean, those poor people. So there's just a lot of things going on. There's fires, you know, the train derailments. and Oh, the trains have been, uh, can you believe that many derailments in the last while? And then close calls with airplanes on the on the runways. Mm -hmm. You know, which they say a lot of that's, that's just That's what I was concerned air. about when you took a flight recently. Did you I, worry about I me? worried about you. What were you worried about? I was worried about that airplane would hit. Well, oh, that's sweet of you. Because who would make your <laughs> my, my rolls? And... <laughs> who makes the goodies? <laughs> yeah, that's right. He makes the coffee, so I just stop myself and say, "Well, he makes the coffee, I make the rest." It's kind of like the coffee. The couple that couldn't agree on what kind of coffee to drink, flavor decaf, ended up to be grounds for divorce. Ooh. <laughs> 
I'm very well, thankful. That, I have a hubby that makes my coffee too. Yeah. Um, Isn't that yeah. nice to be spoiled that way? It really what is. What was that one about the mud uh, ground oh, coffee? Well, yeah. Well, we get, customer complained to the waitress and says, this coffee tastes like mud. When she says it was ground this morning. <laughs> That's bad. Okay, that I think is. We're, that's the end of the news. But it's interesting to watch how all the news of what is happening. But on the good side, we've talked about a lot of dark stuff and crazy stuff. But on the good side, I mean, talking about a revival that is catching the eyes and the ears of the world. The networks are CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox. Fox. Yeah, all these news channels are hitting the nightly news. And when you know when the world starts taking notice, they're taking notice. Yes. And it's uh, really, really interesting because, you know, over there in Wilmar, Kentucky, it's known, uh, it actually is said, is, is, it has a history of great revivals. So I didn't know this. I was kind of researching it last night, Marty. Mm -hmm. And this was so interesting because listen to this. The former revival, the first one that started there in Wilmar, Kentucky, which is a, a town of only 6,000 with, you know, uh, and uh, uh, so there's only 6,000 people there. So it's just a small community. Yes. But they had their first revival in 1905. And it started in a February during a blizzard. Sound familiar? And I thought, isn't this something where this has been hitting hard, but we're having... We are having blizzards like we have not seen in decades here. And then listen to this lineup. They had one in 1908. They had one in 1921, 1950, which was 118 hours. Mm -hmm. And there were 50,000 people that were saved. Their lives were changed in that one, Marty, in 1950. And the, and the news in the nation, the national news, it hit everything because it was such a phenomenon. Then in 1958, they had one of 63 hours, 1970, 144 hours, 1992 in um, March and in 2006 or four days. And now they have this one. And I, you know what I just love? I, you and I were talking about that. It started in a very conservative yes. Christian church. It wasn't a big flash of something. I think in this, in this last one, I think. Then they even request that Fox didn't bring in the camera. Well, yeah, Fox had asked if they could come in and do a story. And they said, you know, we would, but we, please, we add, we request that you do not come bring cameras. We do not want to disturb the presence yes. of what is the psalmist of what That's God it. is doing. And I thought that was wonderful that we don't commercialize it. Uh, it goes back to practicing the presence yeah. of Christ. Everything's, everything's on the growth. It seems like COVID's uh, still kicking up some here and there. And it seems like they're, now we're getting more 24 presidential candidates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nikki Haley and, and different ones are coming in. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. But you know, back to that revival, you know, can you imagine uh, with a town of 6,000 and they're coming in from all over in several countries and there's, you know, there's only a few bathrooms in town and there's rooms, you know, so people are lining up for nearly half a mile or a mile to try mm -hmm. to get in because there's a hunger for God. Mm -hmm. And I love it where Joel talks about that the young will have dreams, you know, that, uh, that uh, talking about revival. And there's been so many that have, God has spoken to their hearts and it's going to start with young people. Mm -hmm. And how wonderful, because we've seen such a rash in the last two years of tragic things That's that right. hit a lot of young people. But this one is starting with the young people and in a very uh, conservative spot. Yeah, and for the, oh, it's such a wonderful thing to see people get saved. Yes. That's what we've done all our lives. Yes. Just... This one now is getting so large that they've moved it into different buildings. Bigger buildings. Yeah, and interesting, they were, uh, they were talking to people on the street and they said, we want our place back to normal. And I thought, isn't that kind of way, sometimes we have a move of God or like after the, after the towers went down, people were rushing to church and they wanted God, and after a while, it was like, okay, now it's enough of that. Back to normal life. Yes, it is. It seems like people want to, you know, they want to get on with life. The religion makes them nervous. Yeah. Or, or being saved makes them nervous because they realize that is something supernatural. It's mm -hmm. something God does specially at a yes. certain time. You know, and I thought it was neat. We have so many uh, beautiful big churches with big programs and the lighting and the orchestras, and, and I love it. 
but how God uses a little Christian college yeah. that is just always like a piano and a guitar as they just decide to stay after a class and just worship a little bit. And it how came through the prayer. Pres- yeah, it came through prayer. The presence of the Lord was as if I will be lifted up. Yes, if, if I'm lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. The whole thing is to lift up Jesus because if he is lifted up, then there's something now next takes place. He says, I will draw mm-hmm. all men unto myself. And when you feel that drawing, that conviction, I sat in that pew, I was without God. I know what that draw feels like. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And another thing is that whenever you have a great move of God, there's also the devil's going to be mad. Oh, yes. Because he knows his time is up. That's right. You used to have a line about the flies in the fall. How was that? You said, <laughs> well, the flies in the fall would go kamikaze. What I mean by kamikaze, the, in the World War II that we had, the Japanese would take their airplanes and they just want to fly them into a ship, kill themselves, but they wanted to take out the ship. That was their deal. Well, the flies in the fall, when they feel that nip of cold air in the, in the weather, they'll just fly in your face. Go ahead and kill me. I'm dead anyway. Mm-hmm. But the devil doesn't, uh, he's not going to get worn down very easily because even even with the revival going on, which is spreading to different cities and many, many campuses, praise the Lord for that. But yet there's people even in the little town, and I, I understand being crowded. I, I understand that. But it's the mentality. We want to go back to normal. And they, you know, they're saying, well, you know, I can't even get to the grocery store. Can you imagine the rush on the food? Yes. And I, and I understand that. They said, well, then they decided, well, we're going to have to shut down the revival. <laughs> well, I love the scripture it says it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, spirit. saith the Lord. There's that pulling sensation, that wooing. He, uh, he says, behold, I stand at your heart's door and knock. He wants to come into hearts. He wants to come into lives. He wants to transform us from death unto life. Yes, but those that are not interested in it, are going to fight it. And just like this is one lady said, I can't even get to the grocery store. I just wish they leave town. And then you have other ones that are complaining about, you know, here we are have been complaining about drugs and, and all the, you know, the fighting among the youth and the, and all this going on. And, uh, but now what is doing good, they're still fighting because the, the people are fighting just saying, Hey, you know what? Um, these, you know, they don't want the young people doing this either. You think they would say, wow, what a great thing that there's a revival that's changing the lives of these young people. Had we had this early, we may not have had a lot that's happened in the last two years. And then the health department, now I just saw our deal last night where they, they would like to come in and try to shut some things down because they had a case of measles that they found and they found out that it was on a certain day. So those thousands of people that were there, you know, they'd like to come in and shut that down. Yeah, well, they, you know, if they can shut it down, then because, see, there's the world. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. The Bible talks about mm-hmm. we don't we, we wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm-hmm. When Eve on the tree in the Garden of Eden, uh, she was looking at the f- fruit of the tree and she says it looks good, pleasant to the eyes. Uh, tree to make be desired to make one wise and so she she says i'd like to have that and who sold the lie who sold the lie was lucifer god's worship and praise leader former in heaven now cast to earth he was there to try to take eve down Mm-hmm. Because when he took Eve and Adam down, he took us all down. That's right. That's right. And that's what that's what the world, that's what evil would like to yes. do. You know, in uh, Joel, I love this, you know, because we've pr- been praying for revival. I was just reading this morning, just a few minutes ago, actually. And in Joel, and, and in this Bible, it, it says, I'm starting with verse 12 in chapter 2, the Lord says, even now, come back to me with your heart, fast cry and be sad. Tearing your clothes is not enough to show you are sad. Let your heart be broken. See, a lot of people, they've never had a broken heart. Yeah. They've never had a soft heart. So let your heart be broken. Come back to the Lord your God because he is kind and he shows mercy. And I thought, how wonderful that that God shows mercy and no matter what we've done. And, and with this revival, you know, um, 
you know, revival is just <laughs> revival. It means that you're going to revive something, something that was either dead or was not alive. Yeah, well, or come really, back alive. Really, what revival is is that it's praying, asking Christ into your heart. It's getting rid of sin. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you get rid of sin, this is what it's all about. And when you get rid of sin, how do you know it? Because you can feel clean on the inside. You feel yes. free on the inside. Yes, yes, and that, yes. That freedom brings you joy. It's joy unspeakable, the Bible says, and full of glory. And so we enjoy. I remember how happy I was when I came to Christ. Yes. Didn't that happen for oh, you? Oh, yes. Even as a kid. Yes. We yes. were we were happy. It was it was just like a new, it was like a dream come true. I, and I, I can't even explain it, but everything changed from that moment of that prayer. Well, how do you get a, the question that I would have is how do you get a 12 year old boy to all of a sudden change life's conversations to nothing but Jesus? Well, you know what I, you talked about earlier, a couple of years ago, you mentioned about you were on a swing set one day. Yeah. And uh, and all, you didn't you didn't go to church, didn't know anything about God other than you know, maybe a Christmas service or whatever. But you tell me, what was the what thing came you... to my mind as I was swinging almost straight out? I was it was a long swing. And I well, was that, that would be you. Yeah. You, and you, I was swinging. Uh, the question came to my heart was, where did you come from? How did you get here? Another question was, where are you going to go? That was a big one. That was a big one. Don't you think that was seed that was sown in you at that time? So were you thinking about this from the time and then going to church with your grandma and they would be singing songs about all the way, all the way, all the way with Jesus, yes. you know? And so these were seeds that were being grown, seeds that were of hunger that were sown in you. And so when you got to, and probably because both of us and many homes didn't have Christ in their home and there was a lot of sadness uh, wasn't happy. There wasn't, you know, tears of joy. It was tears of despondency and depression before we found the Lord. But I also had the other side happen. I also had the side that happened when I came down the hill, uh, running down the hill, and I hit something sharp with my foot. Oh, really? And I used a bad word. Oh, wow. First time in my life I ever used a curse word. And I remember how the curse word stung in my heart. Mm, praise the Lord for that. Yeah, that wasn't a pleasant experience. In other words. So you had, there were, there were steps preceding this yeah. thing. So when you got to church inviting, of course, I remember you talking about how, because that was a true revival we had in that church. You talk about a revival. Yes. I mean, I mean, dozens and dozens came Families, to Christ. more families. Families came yeah. to Christ. And out of that little church in Sisseton, South Dakota, became many missionaries, yes. evangelists, preachers, uh, church leaders. And to this day, I mean, when you go back and think about it, there are dozens in that little church that stem clear back from the little senior, the silver saints that were praying for us as young people. And we had the pastors who were, who were evangelistic and they were, they were, they were in it for souls. Yeah, yes, so when that, uh, sister, what was her name? Uh, Sister Raby. Sister Raby, when she preached, and you told me she was preaching on something in the Old oh, Testament. She was, she was pre preaching on beasts and biles and all that. Out of the old, I didn't, I'd never heard of that stuff before. It had to be a little scary, was it? Or was you just? <laughs> but Lowell had a line. My brother Lowell had a line. He says, if you're under the anointing, he says, you can preach on green stamps and get people to heaven. <laughs> That's true. That's true. My brother Wes, who pastored, this is interesting. I was talking to him the other day. We were talking about unique experiences of people coming to Christ. And he said when he pastored in St. Cloud, Minnesota, and he moved into a school, and there was just a great move of God where there was the charismatic movement, and it was going strong. And people were inviting people to come to church. And he said, I never had a service that did not have an altar call. And he said, he said, if it was Sunday morning, Sunday night, he said, midweek service. And he said, or even a business uh, meeting, business meeting. He said, a lady had invited her friend because she knew her friend needed Christ. And, she, and he said, she came to church and, uh, and he had the business meeting and the lady said, I'm afterwards. She says, uh, pastor Brooks, I, I was just disappointed because I brought her to get saved. He says, and you had, and you had a, a business meeting and he, 
And he said something like, well, where's she at? So he went over to talk to her, shared the gospel in a short form, prayed the sinner's prayer. And she found the Lord in a church business meeting. Yes, that's how. <laughs> well, anyway, what happens sometimes, I think that people, when they go to church, they figure out what church is for. And then they they pass certain mile markers. Some There's there's all sorts of different uh, formats that they follow. Some are baptized. Some are take confirmation. Some do all these other different things. And then they make the assumption, I'm okay. Yeah, that's true. They that's assume true. that I'm on the way. But then when they get saved, they say, I thought I was saved. I have a good friend of mine in Sioux Falls in a home right now. His name is Marv. Marvin, yes. Yeah, Marvin. Marvin says, Larry, I came to your, your services, your Lowell services in Watertown, South Dakota. My wife and I did. And he says, we were good people. We thought we had it together. But he says, we were so far out of it. He says, I got saved and I really got saved. And the Lord came into my heart and our lives from that very moment till this moment have been changed. Yeah, isn't that great? That is so thrilling. That's what that's a true revival. In yeah. there used to be a song we sing, start the uh let it start in me, let the revival yeah. start in me. And so God has, you know, um you will know when there's a revival because the whole atmosphere, the aroma of the church, the people, the families, everything changes. Yeah. And there's a new excitement. And we're saved what? We are saved to tell others. Yes, we're saved to go out and to the, all the world and bring that good news to other people. You know, so I'm thrilled to hear, you know, where these, there have been the greatest revivals, I mean, all through the centuries, but to see what God is doing, what's going to do. You know, I've never shared this before. Okay. Never shared this publicly. But I was thinking this morning about a time in my life, talking, thinking about the revivals as kids that we attended, how our lives were changed, you know, how we were called to ministry. And, and that was through revivals that people yes. came. We spent weeks, you know, praying for the revival. Yes. And then while well, it was there, but I was in Bible, uh, I was in Bible school in uh, Hub City uh, Bible School Institute in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And in the summer, I traveled with a girls' trio. The, the school had different groups that go out and sing and minister and then represent the school. And uh, we'd gone up to live, get this name, Devil's Lake, North Dakota. And there was a Bible camp there. And in fact, Lowell had, and Connie attended there. They had a Bible, they had a uh, Bible camp. A school there years yes, before yes. before Aberdeen yeah. but anyway I was with this trio and we were there to represent the school and there was probably I at that time maybe a couple couple hundred kids two three hundred I don't quite remember how many there were but I remember we went into the cafeteria my girlfriends and I that were traveling and as we we're sitting there I looked out the window and I looked over at the dorm the dormitory and I and it looked like flames coming out of it and i remember i just was terrorized and i said look there's a fire it looked like a fire and i said to ruthie and sylvan and judy and i said there there looks like a fire over there and we looked out the window and that's exactly it looked like yeah. flames were coming out and we took off and when we got to the dorm we was going to run in and you know do whatever we thought we were going to have to do in that moment grab people whatever as soon as we put our foot through the door we heard praying and we heard oh, really? crying. And then in, in a few steps, the presence of God literally just dropped. And the Holy Spirit began to just, the Holy Spirit was going in front of us. It was just like we were following, we were following this. And as we walked by room to room, it was falling. And as we looked at our left and we looked at our right, these young, these young kids of the campers that were there were literally on their knees repenting and crying and praying you look to the right and as we walked down they were each room they were falling or kneeling on the floor and praying to god and there was the spirit and we walked all the way down we walked upstairs and we just followed that followed the holy spirit is walking through and the presence of god i had never felt the presence of god like that and every room that we were coming to as we walked by the holy spirit was ahead of us and they were just every room, four to six to eight young people, just uh, all of us just yes. 
I would say falling, but they just they just knelt. They were, bowing. they were bowing to the floor and crying and praying. And we got to one room and I said, oh, God, this is so awesome. I've never seen anything like this. I said, God, just prove to us, just prove to us that this is really you. And I went in this room. And there was a young girl that had diabetes that couldn't oh, even wow. hardly make it through a day. Yeah. She was so bad. And the and her friends, the faith rose up in those minutes that was, this was going on, laid hands on her and prayed. And she was instantly, I mean, you could just see this thing take place in her. And went to another room and followed it. And they were right. And they, they were so excited because they, this girl they knew was healed. They were praying out loud. And they were praying over this young girl who stuttered so badly she couldn't say one sentence. She couldn't say one sentence. And they prayed. They joined hands and by faith laid hands on her and prayed. And that girl instantly stopped stuttering. And God was bringing a revival in that little Devil's Lake, North Dakota campground where the devil sure was on the run. Because then that one lasted about two or three days, but we saw God do miracles. And that made a believer out of me. And God gave me a beautiful experience at that time that I felt God closer than I've ever, ever felt him. So is it real? Yes. yes real. Is it possible for it to change lives? Yes. But it goes back to our hunger. Yes. It goes back to our hunger. That's what it is. Now they had this interesting to have this movie that come out at this time. Oh, yes. It's, yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, you know, it's Joseph. the Jesus Revolution. Yeah. And this began in the 1970 in, in California. And they've been uh, they've been advertising this movie. I've talked to several people. We've not been there yet. But I've talked to some, so many people because this happened. We were out in that area. Oh, yes. Right after uh, Lundstrom's were saved in 57. So 61, we left on the road, Lowell and Connie and myself. And we went out to Hate and Ashbury Street. It was 66. Yeah. And went out there to Hate and Ashbury Street. And we were out there. And we saw all the Volkswagen buses. Yes. All the hippies. All hippies. I mean, real flower, live hippies. Flowers painted on everything. And then they were living in those. And they had their guitars out there. And, they mm -hmm. were, and then it's so 1970 then. You know, Chuck Smith, in which we... Uh, Lowell and you know often talked about him and at that time this Chuck Smith from Costa Rica uh, Costa Mesa California yes. he was hungry for God and he's he was a pastor that was just he was a pastor that was saying God you know what I just don't want to exist I want to make a difference and and uh interesting that a young man named Lonnie which was a full-fledged born-again evangelist hippie and he happened to come to that church where this pastor was and walked in. And, of course, this pastor, he was praying for God to use him. But he wasn't really expecting it was going to be this. But how God began to uh, speak through this Lonnie, the hippie evangelist, to this pastor, Chuck Smith. And from that moment, God began to work in a great mm -hmm. revival. The great revolution started at that time. And Greg Laurie and his wife were two of his converts. Of this, of the, of the of revolution, yes. and uh, look at how he worked with Chuck Smith, which was his pastor for years and years, and won thousands and <laughs> thousands of people to Christ. You know, there's one more that we haven't talked about yet. What was that? Uh, David Wilkerson. Oh, David Wilkerson, cross oh, in the you. switchblade. Oh my, the faithful. Remember down David. there and uh, how he opened up that church, and he was on the he, the kids with switchblades. And he was on the street witnessing to them, led hundreds and thousands of those. Yes, to he could have been. He could have been knifed to death. Yes, he could. But have. you know what? The Holy Spirit was literally it had enclosed him, and, and uh, he went on, to, like you said, to win thousands yes. to Christ. What a great, what a great testimony. So there's been wonderful, great revivals, and there's been great revivals in many churches. But we're looking for that end time because it's the end of time for Satan. And it's the beginning to see the yeah. world change. You know what I hear the pastors saying? I hear the pastors saying amongst themselves, we have to have this revival. Yes. It's the only thing that's going to save our country right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because there's so much of this, all this anti, anti-law, anti-this, anti-everything. There's just so much. Yes. You know, there's a great evangelist, you know, 
in the 70s, we had Oral Roberts for Healing. We had Catherine Kuhlman. Yes. We were blessed to go to Catherine. I was blessed to go to Catherine Kuhlman's meetings. Was there in Kansas City and uh, seeing people born again, saved. They yes. literally, I mean, they literally, I went to be prayed over. Yes. And <laughs> is that what you were thinking? <laughs> I went to be prayed over and I was seated with our family and friends. And uh, as they were praying and Catherine Kuhlman, she would come out so graceful, but the Holy Spirit was so, so, I mean, she was just clothed in the, in the righteousness of Christ. It was just so beautiful. She came out, she was praying and God would direct her to people who were sick and people who needed healing. And in front of me, she, they didn't know, she didn't know who they were. And no. I didn't know who they were. And she pointed out and she would tell what they had, what their illness was, prayed. And I mean, they were healed. They were healed on my left. They were healed on my right chair, the chair behind me. And I think God said, Gloria, I think you need to just wait a little bit longer. You, <laughs> you could, At that time, you could say Oral Roberts. You could say Catherine Kuhlman. And what would they say? They would say healing. Healing, yes. And if you said Billy Graham, what would they say? Salvation. Yes, that was, he was the greatest evangelist of yes. the 19th century. Yes. And I mean, and how one person being just true and honest. Standing up, there was, uh, they had a, it was a New York Times or something. They sent a letter out to the LA and they said, Puff Graham. And that was the, that was his start. And oh. they put him on the news and he was spread like wildfire. Yeah. He gave it all. He gave, he gave it all. He, he, you know what? He sacrificed a lot, but there are some that God calls to sacrifice. I think of missionaries that are so called with their families, and and we support several missionaries, and how yes. proud we are of them. We have, you know, uh, we have them in um, um, Thailand. We have one in Africa. You know, we have in uh, Brett and his wife that's over there yeah, in Barcelona. Barcelona. They were there and they're next to, they're over there. My, my mind just went blank. But we have them here in the United States. And uh, so, you know, God is good. God is good. He's just calling, calling people to righteousness. Yeah, it's so exciting. So exciting. So now they have this movie and uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. I want to see that. Because that was our era mm -hmm. of how we were out there. And I mean, you, most of the time, you probably didn't hear much about the about that going on because you were under the bus trying to, <laughs> trying to fix a motor, get the tires yeah, on. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we, you didn't have radio. You didn't have cell phones. You didn't, no, have, didn't, have, you didn't have anything to get the extra stuff. So we had to count on Lowell because we were so, so busy on the road. We had to count on him to come and give us the nightly news report according to Lowell Lundstrom. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, how good God has been. And so, you know, we have that privilege we have the privilege of just you know, knowing of who Jesus is. We have the privilege of knowing what he's done for us and with us. Well, you, what happens is that we you carry with you a peace that passes all oh, understanding. understanding. Mm -hmm. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. It is not something that will grow old or tainted or tasteless. Mm -hmm. It stays full and, and furious, really. Yeah, you know, it's just like I prayed this morning. It's my prayer. Lord, keep a song in my heart. Keep my heart pure and clean. And Lord, let me always practice the presence of Christ. That not just prayer time from 7 to 8 and you know, when you're praying over your food or when somebody calls with, with a request, but to live in his presence. That's what keeps us going. That's what's going to take us through. I didn't say he's going to keep us in it. And it, it doesn't mean we're going to be uh, not have any problems, but he's promised to walk with us. With and us, and, us, yes. yes. And oh boy, you know what's interesting? What you were going to minister on, uh, heavens, we didn't even get to that. But no. you know, what? let's do that next time, shall sure. we? Let's do that next time. Larry has a great message that he's prepared and talking about uh, the families, 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 and sometimes we don't have perfect families. How many have ever known a preacher to have a problem? <laughs> How many of you have known a preacher's son who has not had a problem yeah. or a problem child or, or a prodigal? But uh, you said the messy family is about how God is cares about the family. Yes. The very first family, I'll just give you a tidbit. A tidbit is that the very first family messed up. Two boys alive, 
first two children born to a woman, Cain and Abel, and one killed the other one. And so what happened was with that whole scenario, uh, those that evil came in. It was a lie from Lucifer that got us started in trouble. Then it was family mess ups from there on. A lot of pride. A lot of pride. Well, that's a good teaser. So, so be sure and tune in next week as we're going to be, uh, we'll be sharing that message, Lord willing. Yes. Unless God changes it again. But there may be people who would like to pray today for revival in their own hearts, in their own families. Well, I tell you what, you know, many times you'll feel a vacuum, feel like there's something not quite right down there. There's, that isn't complete. And Lord says, I, behold, I stand at your heart's door and he wants into that. He wants to take away that lost feeling. He wants to give you comfort uh, and he wants to give you joy. He wants that to come to your life. And all you have to do, uh, I always say, what do you got your, uh, to lose? Lowell says, my brother Lowell used to say, he says, if you don't like it, the devil will give you your sins back. So don't, <laughs> uh, <true>. anyway, <laughs> it, you have something that you can count on because you will have forever, and ever and ever, it's promised all the way through 66 books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll have that promise to hold on to. You will change from, I believe in God, to I know whom I believe in. I have believed that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Why don't we pray together? Yes. What do you have to lose? Yes. You can bow your head. No one even know you prayed it, but you do. And... God will know. So let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Love you today. I love you today. Thank you. Thank you. For that gnaw. For that gnaw. That pulling on my heart. That pulling on my heart. To let me know. To let me know. Everything isn't right. Everything isn't right. So I need to repent. So I need to repent. That means to say, I'm sorry to you, God. That means to say, I'm sorry to you, God. I messed up. I messed up. And I know it. And I know it. You know it. You know it. And use the blood of Jesus Christ. And use the blood of Jesus Christ. To wash my sins away. To wash my sins away. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us know. So thankful for the Lord. And uh, Marnie, I know you're a pastor's wife and you've had marvelous things happen in your church and our home church there in Sisseton, South Dakota. And that's why we're all where we are at in ministry today is because there was a revival at a time that God touched our hearts and he touched our lives. And I'm so glad that he touched yours or you wouldn't be with us. But uh, you are with us today. Come on in, Marnie. I am sorry. I am trying. My video won't come on. I keep clicking and it gives me an error message that I cannot start the video. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, then we're just going to end it here. And yes. uh, but uh, just go ahead and tell them where they can uh, call their friends and tell them to look at this. Absolutely. So, um, and, and I know this isn't how it normally is, but there was just one thought that I wanted to share as you were Good. talking about revival. And it was just about how you know, a, a sign of revival, you said, is that Jesus changes everything. Yes. And, and I was thinking about how really in true revival, it isn't natural for people to want to repent, right? It's That's not, right. Nat it's not natural for us to want to own up to the sin and the darkness inside of us, of us. And so how that is truly a sign of revival when you are seeing people repent of their sins, because it is supernatural. It's outside of what our natural self would want to do. And so I just love the stories you shared because so many of them talked about exactly that repenting coming to a knowledge of our depravity and knowing that we need Jesus so I know you can't see me but by the end of today I will have this uh, video uploaded to www.larrylenstromministries.org just go ahead and click on the CC live banner it will take you to all of the CC live videos and um, this will be a uh, the first one as it is the most recent. And if you would like to share it as an encouragement to others, uh, go ahead and click in the top right hand corner and um, it will uh, give the link for you to share however you would like.
Thank you. Thank you, Marnie. And we thank you for joining us. We want to look forward to next week. We're going to be sharing and let the revival begin in us and let it go forth from us, yes. first of all, to our families and then out to those that are lost and hurting. God bless you. Take that next cup of coffee and have a great day. Bye-bye. About 50 years ago in South Dakota, the Lundstrom's knelt in prayer to God one night. There the Savior sent us with the message that we should sing about eternal life. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow man. And we'll keep traveling on, singing a happy song until we hear God's call to glory land. We've met a lot of friends in all our travels. We're so blessed. We know their prayers have helped us stay alive. And we're so thankful. So if you ever feel impressed to mention my name, then you know it's my turn to drive. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow men.